What's going on folks? Welcome back to the Let Dirt Fly YouTube channel. So, if you caught our last riding video, you'll see that this guy here had a bad day. Thermostat or something. Sportsman had overheat issues. So, um, you probably brought to this video possibly, well, maybe you're a subscriber. If you're not, you might consider doing that. But if you're not and you're just clicking on this title because of what we're about to do, yeah, we're gonna be changing out the thermostat and the water pump on so that's 2015 Player Sportsman 570. Um, real quick, I just wanna tell you guys kinda of how to diagnose a overheating issue. Number one thing to check for when you're on a trail, if you're out on ATVs and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna check your radiator. Uh, they plug up pretty often, but Seth, you can actually see light through it. So we knew that wasn't an issue. He's got the Rad Relocate kit. Um, so we had plenty of flow, fan was kicking in, so the fan sensor and everything was working. That's gonna be your next uh, thing make sure your fans actually kicking on um, Then after that believe it or not you can lose antifreeze or water um, Usually if you are that's not a good day because that means it's going somewhere and yeah. nine out of ten times that's a head gasket, but um, We actually let his quad cool down for a minute. We popped the rad cap. It was basically full It, it had like a tiny little couple air bubbles in it, but yeah, nothing, no, nothing that would cause it to overheat Um so the next thing we checked was um, we we're getting hot here on the um, supply side of the radiator, but going back to the um, quad, she was cold. ice cold, like the literally ice cold. The actually, radiator was yeah, the radiator cold. was actually ice cold. Um, you could literally put your hand behind the fan here, and it was just blowing cold air. But um, so today um, we're going to be showing you kind of how to diagnose even further, and most likely we have a thermostat issue. Um, but while we're in there, we're gonna have the system drained anyway. Quad has how much? 700 miles? 750, something like something that. Something like that. Um, so you know what? Doesn't hurt to put a new water pump in. Impeller. Yeah, the new, new impeller. Um, so pretty sure it's just a thermostat though. I'll kind of show you guys how to do that. The kind of sketchy redneck way. I'm sure some of you have probably seen it before with cars, but we're gonna do that. And uh, yeah, right now we're just gonna pop off both side panels and probably both foot wells and then we'll go ahead and Tear it apart. Get the thing drained down. Yeah. Catch you in a second. All right, so just got plastics off so um actually i forgot this this uh we don't need to take this whole well off so don't do that if you did already sorry um this is the side panel and then over here i gotta take the foot well off because we gotta get into the um water pump housing right there so right now we're gonna go ahead and uh actually drain out the uh coolant so i just have my old oil pan here and then usually it looks like somewhere here there should be a drain plug i'd hope or imagine or we just pop the usually is a drain plug uh, maybe there's not we might just be dumping the uh hose off cool all right we'll figure it out i see there's like a little nipple here sticking out but i don't know we'll figure it out all right so don't exactly see where the heck the uh drain is on this usually i mean my my can am has a drain so we're just gonna go with the take the hose off, get soaking wet method. So, so it's a great one, you know. Gets the job done. Gets the job done. That's all that matters, right? And usually, ninety percent of the time, when you aim for the pan, usually does not hit it. All right, here we go. Get wet and yep. Basically missed. Thank God on my foot. <laughs> and see what's behind door number one here. Now you want to be very gentle about the way you crack these loose there, right? They're all coming very good so far. They're all behaving. I don't know why manufacturers like to use such small screws on their engine, especially something that's in the water jacket. <laughs> I don't know if this is in the water jacket, but I imagine it is. 
be. Ha. Ah. ah, there we go. Let there be light. Now you know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna drop a screw into the antifreeze. Yeah, probably. Ah, the smell of the antifreeze in the morning. All right, so I got all the bolts out. Let's see what's behind door number one. Okay, there's our impeller. So, doesn't look bad. Doesn't look broken or anything. This should spin off some way. It's reverse thread. Never mind. I was gonna say, why don't you check that? All right. So, impeller looks perfectly fine. Um, and then, obviously, we, because I was turning the motor over, whoops. Uh, oh yeah, look, it says tighten that way. Go figure, Marshall. Um, yeah, impeller looks perfectly fine. Figured that wasn't the issue, but you know what? Doesn't hurt to swap this guy out for, what, 17 bucks he said it was? Um, so we're just gonna throw a new one in here. Um, click easy fix. O-ring looks all okay. We'll probably just clean it up a little bit and everything. Throw the panel back on, and then we're actually gonna take the thermostat out, which I'm basically like 99.5% sure. Maybe 99.6, not sure. Um, but pretty sure that's the issue. Catch you in a sec. All right, got a new impeller. Looks exactly the same and unbroken, like the unbroken one we have already. Just a little less dark because it hasn't spent its life in antifreeze yet. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this guy on. So it's pretty dang simple. It's reverse thread, so found it out already. So it's a spinner on nice and easy, if I can. Apparently my hand eye coordination is not doing good today. There you go. And then... Just like... That should be good. Mm. All right, cover back on, hose reconnected, and then we're gonna go to the thermostat. Like I said, we're gonna try the redneck way of testing a thermostat, which is always fun. You don't even know what I'm gonna do, do you? No, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. You'll learn. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you just take your thermostat out and it just takes a freaking lifetime to warm up. We don't run thermostats in race cars, for obvious reasons. More to go wrong when you're at the track. You just gotta warm them up for like 20 minutes before you go out there. Waste the entire tank of gas, you know. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment down below if you think uh, you guys wanna watch some dirt racing action. You can see the car right behind us over here. Uh, I just had practice the other day, so I, I filmed it, but I didn't do any kind of vlog with it or anything, because, uh, well, it's just a practice. It's not as exciting. There's no wrecks and stuff in practice. Well, there is, but not as many. Seth said it's only exciting when he goes there if, and there's a... It's only exciting if they crash. <laughs> Not for me. That's, what you that, watch. that's, that's, that's a, why you watch NASCAR. You want to see wrecks. I don't plan on going out there crashing, you know. Believe it or not. You're not pushing hard enough. That's why you're not <laughs> going to be the best. No, it's called respecting other people. You got to at least work with them. It's fun rubbing doors and stuff like that, but when you got guys just smashing your doors, then those are not the cool people. Now there's probably a certain torque pattern that Polaris wants you to do when you put this cover back on. But I'm just gonna kinda do what I'm expecting it to be. Start with the middle and work your way out. So, I'm just hand tightening these right now. And this is only aluminum. And I'm pretty sure, well, they're magnetic, so they're steel bolts. So, you do not over tighten. So I'm just gonna snug. It's an O-ring too, so you don't have to go crazy. Snug. 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 I said just kind of working my way around. This so she clamps down evenly. There you go. Alright. Put this back on here. Everything's everything's eight millimeter, even the thermostat housing. I found out so far, so grab yourself an 8 mil. You're gonna be set to go. So actually, that's all we would have really needed in antifreeze to change this on the trail. And torque bits to get your foot well off. Yeah. So you usually carry those anyway, don't you? Uh, no. Not, no? not on the trail. Yeah. I carry them in my car. On big trips, I have the mine with me. There you go. Actually, so no, it's not one side I done. Do have them. I was gonna say, I thought you had them in, your, in your toolbox here. You kind of left behind there on the trail. I left that in the video, by the way. That was impressive. I didn't realize that the back door didn't lock. I was, I was like, I was like, you were, you were so funny because earlier in the day, Seth was just like, 
He's like, oh, dude, I had no water in my, my trunk or whatever. He's like all proud of it and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, I'm took sitting there off like, the trunk like open. that's his drink. That's his tools. <laughs> so nothing got wet because there was nothing in there <laughs> at some point. All right. Hold on. Now on to the thermostat. All right. Got you guys some light on the situation here. But now we're going to change out the thermostat. And like I said, this is probably our guy that went bad. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out right now. So it is in a little bit of a tight squeeze down here. Um, she's right here, there's gonna be two, what I'm seeing, two bolts basically, again, good old eight mil. So let's go ahead and crack them loose and hopefully not drop the screw. I'm gonna crack them loose and then maybe grab a magnet and use that to, I always hate taking stuff out of cast because they snap. Uh, <laughs> so we're feeling. They, they get oxidized in there. Yeah, no. Long skinny fingers. I love it. <laughs> that was that was talent. This one's the this one. One's this one's me the one I'm gonna drop. You watch. Oh, absolutely. Do I have more list screws? No. So the best part is is when you hear it go clankety clank and then you hear it no, stop. Never but hits, hits the, the floor. Ground, <laughs> hits the ground. That's when you're like, damn it. <laughs> then you gotta go fish on the engine. I know. Why would they do this like this? I do have a magnet, but I gotta still get it looser up here. That's probably what I'm gonna do is just magnet it out, because let's not get grass into your water pump, because that, that'll destroy your water pump. Ooh, grass. I don't want that. You see how it's all oxidized? Oh, yeah. Actually, what I should have did is put some anises. We'll do that on these ones, little anises. It feels nice that and looks like it's pretty much loose. All right. You got it. All right. You got her. All right. And, yeah. and nice. We're making a mess. There's a thermostat that we can't get out because this is still too tight in here. What the? Tight. Oh, tight. Pull the motor over a little bit. Some soft motor mounts. There we go. <laughs> so you're going to need your buddy. <laughs> and then here's our thermostat. With the gasket, I think. Or does the new one come with it? No, no one doesn't have a gasket. So we gotta use that. This looks like it goes around it. All right, there's our guy. Now, we gotta do your redneck test first. So right now I'm gonna show you guys how not to do it. I can feel it's locked up. But, all right, here we go. You gonna hit it with a torch or something? Yes, we are. See if it pops. Is it open? I definitely didn't know how to do this one. Yeah, that thing's glowing red and it's not opening. It's night too. It's actually melting the spring. It's glowing red. <laughs> yeah. Fire, fire. <laughs> so. That's what you call a shot thermostat. It's still smoking. What the hell? <laughs> I, I melted that spring. That thing's toast now. It was a very toast, but now we're using that one. But we are going to save test the. This uh, one too? Yeah. No. We are going to save the impeller. Yes. It doesn't. doesn't the impeller hurt. is fine. Um, he actually has another sportsman's um, 450 for yep. his wife, so um, probably forbid. the same part. Yeah, I mean they're basically interchangeable. So you just basically would take the o-ring here and it kind of just slides over it's kind of got like a ridge inside it that it just slides right into pretty easy deal and then uh yeah we're just gonna put it back in so should be good to go all right so o-rings on and now we're gonna be putting it back in um i don't believe there's any direction it has to go it just has to well it has to go this side down and but where'd you have that <laughs> There we are. Just want to make sure there's no blockages or anything that I can see, but you can't really see down there anyway. It doesn't look like anything's blocked up. Everything looks nice and clean. Let me get this in first. Let me put the light here. Is it going to stay here? Probably not. Stay. Stay. Okay. Just like that, man. That thing stinks. Well, you just said the fucking milk. Well, I had to test it. All right, give her a yank. We're getting a little bit smuts in there, but it should be okay. Mm. 
There we go. All right. All right, so yeah, we almost forgot. Ended up putting some anti season I don't know if you guys can see that, on the bolt. Bolts, rather. Um, just as a nice precautionary thing to help you get it back out if you ever got changes in the future. Because um, that stuff likes to oxidize and you can't get it out, which is a awesome. bad day. Now this one's going to be fun right here. This is the back one here. Uh -huh. Got it. Nice. Mm -hmm. A lot of mud and packed up in here. Huh? Yeah, it means it was a good day of riding until this happened. <laughs> you know what? It was a good day of riding until this happened. Yeah, yeah. If you guys haven't checked out that video, go check it out. It was fun. All right. So again, this has like an O-ring style seal. Don't go monkey wrenching on it. I mean, look at the size of the wrench we're using. So don't need to go crazy. Just gotta be snug. Sorry, I know my head's probably blocking the view. There's no real view. And not on the bolt. Where is the bolt at? Is that the bolt? That's the bolt. Got it. <laughs> Snug. All right. So that's how you replace it. So now here comes the next most important part, and that's filling the system. So basically, we're going to fill everything up. And then the big part that a lot of guys skip over burping. is burping it. You're gonna have to burp the thing. Um, by burping, we mean basically you gotta get all the air out of the system because obviously we just completely drained the whole thing. Yes. So um, if you don't do this step and you just fill it up, it's gonna be big air pockets and then you're gonna overheat. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely gonna overheat. So that. right now, I'm gonna grab some antifreeze and have some fun. All right, filling time. So there's a couple ways you do this. Um, we're gonna try it the first way because on my race car is always a fun time but um sometimes i do it this way where you just dump it right it depends on the system um just dump it right into the fill um but as you can see sometimes it takes a minute um when you have bigger systems sometimes i'll just pop one of the radiator top radiator hoses off fill it most of the way and then fill it this way otherwise you gotta go delicately like set this well when we actually did the the relocate we poured a bit of antifreeze everywhere. Nope. If you remember that. Yeah. I don't know if it'll fit on here, but I do have an actual burping bucket thing in my jig. Like mount it on the radiator cap and you just run it up mm -hmm. the temperature and just hits your boop, 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 boop. So the nice part about Seth having, so obviously if you have a, a sportsman, some of you might not have a um, rad reel kit like Seth. Um, same exact process, only your radiator is going to be down underneath that panel right there, um, kind of where the Polaris logo is. Yeah, when you fire it up, you're going to, once you get it close, you're going to want to keep the antifreeze next to you. Just going to hug away here. Boop, boop, boop. So yeah, this takes a few minutes, so bear with us, um, once we get it filled up, um, We'll show you how to, to burp it. All right, guys, so we got it mostly full now. And uh, so got one of these things off Amazon a while back. And basically what you do is you just fill it, which we need more. <laughs> um, just fill it with antifreeze. And uh, just kind of let it go. And it does its thing while the uh, quad runs. Yeah, some more there. It might be watered down a little bit. Looks like it is. Keep it, you can have more. Uh, I'll actually stop, stop that bubbling. So you'll see little bubbles coming up there. That's all air pockets. So I said we gotta run it all the way up to temperature. Do you feel getting warm at all? Coming up yet? Probably not yet. One thing I like to do too is because these are a uh, mechanical driven water pump. I like to, um, once we get towards the end, I like to rev them up a little bit once the thermostat's open. And um, it helps us get some extra bubbles out. So yeah, what's nice about Seth's quad here, actually if we gotta tilt back just a little bit like that. His radiator is the highest point. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. 
There's an air pocket there. <laughs> a little bit. There we go. Turn this. Neutralize a little bit. But yeah, you want to try to see if you can get your quad. Um, one thing that helps a lot is putting it on a um, little bit of a hill. Like luckily we got Seth's quad. His radiator is, and the fill is the highest point. But um, sometimes if it's like with a stock sportsman, um, it is kind of like level with a lot of the piping and stuff. So best thing to do is like put it on a slight incline. Just this way, obviously air will flip to the top and whatnot. Yeah. And get the hoser feel. Yes, you done. I should get starting to get warm. Start. Trying to get some warm. The other one's still cold. It's okay though. Still got to flip the radiator. Radiator's not warm yet. So. Yeah. Takes a minute. Oh yeah, you're gonna see all kinds of steamy delay going on too. Lots of smoke. Set suits. He's seen all kinds of different colors of smoke come out of his quad. <laughs> Electrical smoke. That's basically it. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. So you can tell because we're getting some steam on the radiator here that we are starting to get some temperature. Oh yeah, it's getting warm. That's a good thing. Let's keep it held up and give her a feel here. Not getting hot through yet, but it's not warmed up yet. It takes a minute. You can actually see the smoke slowly going across actually. Or the steam rather, not the smoke. Fix that out. It's getting hot. So, safe to say the thermostat's the issue. Oh yeah, she's getting actually. There she goes. She just opened. You getting warm down here now? It's like lukewarm. Reach on the other side of the. Yeah, it's a little safer before I take my. No more hose. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing we're gonna do is after once we get the system burped, which is basically burped at this point, I'm just gonna let it go for a few more minutes and we'll just throw the cap back on. Um, you gotta run it through a heat cycle. It's the best way to do it because if anything, your quad's gonna overheat most of the time, either under load or idling, one or the other. Um, when you're moving, it's less likely to overheat because uh, you got air flowing through the radiator. So this thing should be able to do heat cycles sitting here idling. So we want the fan kick on and off a couple times. Um, when the fan kicks off, that means that it cooled it down and the quad's happy. So uh, basically, it's gonna idle this thing for a while here. I said it, everything looks like it's coming around. Still a little cool there yet. It's gonna take a minute. The radiator is piping hot though. We're only idling it though, so it takes a little while to get her going. No biggie. That's over here like. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wanna rev her a little bit? Still a couple bubbles here and there. Yeah. It's starting to get warm coming back. I'd say it's still not up to temperature. Yeah, I feel it. It's starting to get warm. It's not super high yet, but what's the supply side feel like? Yeah, it's getting warm. Yeah, the supply side is like lukewarm. I can keep my hand on it, so. Okay. Still not that high yet. <laughs> kind of gets steaming the place out here a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, so we just got a few more minutes of doing this. Uh, right now, we're just gonna take a uh, break for you guys, and we'll catch you once we get the thing to the point where it's gonna be going through its fan cycle. All right, guys, sorry it's a little loud, but fan just kicked in. You'll see we took the, um, what do you call it, bottle off, because uh, you will see once she gets hot enough, it'll start to actually, shut off already. Um, it'll actually start pushing um, fluid up. Um, so that's how many we were there. Actually, you can see coolant's going into the overflow tank now fan kicked in already and shut off so now we're gonna let it do probably one or two more yeah. cycles and just make sure, make sure that we're all good all right so so far the magical light right there is not on so we're looking pretty good I said we're just gonna wait for the fan to kick back in again and then it should again shut back off uh, that's how we know the quad is happy what it was doing the other day it was just running non-stop and the radiator was actually ice cold and blowing cold air out the back so yeah, the fact that it's was, blowing nice hot air now, it was throwing we're up, good to go. Uh, throwing up some oak signals. And so this is an easy repair. Most people would know how to do it, but I mean, this could save you probably at least like, oh, there's a fan again. This could probably at least save you like a couple hundred bucks at the dealer. It's a very easy repair. I mean, the parts over here, like. From Polaris. Yeah, Polaris OEM parts. was $30. Uh, you can find it online anywhere between, I think, like So, you know, it's, it's definitely like the parts are pretty cheap and 
the hardest part is actually burping the system, to be honest. And and getting in that housing was a little bit of fun. It shut off already. And you know what? I mean, we good. originally relocated the radiator. Let it go one more time. We just parked it on a hill, and it. Yeah, it's self but it Yeah, it even had the um, bleeding bucket. You don't even need to really have a bleeding bucket. That just sa saves you from making a big mess. Um, now, the bleeding bucket doesn't always 100% fit every single application. So, um, yeah, that's the only thing that kind of stinks with that. But, uh, yeah, so we're just going to wait for one more heat cycle with this thing. And uh, I think she's going to be good to go. But, again, we'll have to test it in the mud to see how she does. Because she, she was on a rip with these Karachis, man. But uh, yeah, right now we're just, like I said, waiting for one more fan cycle. She fan cycles good. I think she's gonna be good to rip. And you might wanna clamp these down. Or do you wanna play with that? Oh, uh, I just, I'm gonna pop them off. I'm gonna throw the new air filter in. And then, and then, so, uh, gotcha. All right. All right, alrighty, folks. So, just like that, pod is back together. Except for the seat. Seat can wait though. Seat right there. But all the plastics back on everything. Um, we did cycle it for a third time. Everything looks good. No overheating. Uh, fan cycled on and off as it should, and she's happy. She is happy. Yeah. So. So uh, with that, we are going to wrap up this video. We hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope it's helped you out a little bit if you got yourself a sportsman. Um, this is a 2015, like I said, but um, Polaris is designed hasn't hasn't really changed hasn't too much, changed that much no. throughout throughout the years. So. If, if anything, it's a very similar job. Um, so with that, make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, commenting down below. Let us know how I, how we did, I guess, for idiots. I don't know. I mean, it worked, so that's all. <laughs> but yeah, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, and everything. We really appreciate it. And um, follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. You're going to want to um, watch all that because we have a giveaway. So we're going to have more details coming up on that soon. So make sure you guys are following us over there because you don't want to miss out on stuff like that, do we? That's right. Also, uh, don't forget, also with the Instagram and Facebook, we're going to be posting uh, rides that we could ride with you guys. So maybe we'll be coming to a town near you soon. Yeah. So we're going to try to get to some of the like East Coast kind of stuff. Not too too far possibly one gonna be farther uh still in the works we're trying to come up with some stuff but um that stuff's probably gonna more be on our facebook um but if you don't have facebook we're still gonna announce it on instagram i'll we'll probably announce it in the videos too so don't yeah, worry we'll announce it in the um videos. yeah so don't worry um we're gonna have everything up for you guys because we do run a ride with you guys um we want to be a little bit different with our channel and actually like ride with our subscribers and stuff like that because Absolutely. Instead of you sitting behind a screen watching us, we'd rather you be out there doing it with us, so. Hell yeah, how am I supposed to push you if you're not there? Yeah. <laughs> Plus it's better to watch Seth break his crap in real life. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it's a lot more fun. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Towing you back freaking three miles. Hey. Literally three miles. Hey, you know. All right, we will have to catch you guys next time. On Let Dirt Fly. Hey. Have you forgotten where you were?